welcome to session number 27 of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Hi, everyone. Hello. 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 Woo. What's the wee woo? <laughs> That's my out of excitement. <laughs> <laughs> wee woo. Welcome, wee -woo. welcome. Lovely as usual to have you all here. How have you been? How's your week been? Hmm. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's this okay. is a, be a whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we have this on Sundays. <laughs> okay, well, um, hopefully this will... Today's events will not stress you out. <laughs> Let's let's get started. Why don't we uh, leave uh, um, the the stage two da, 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 spinning, Sid? Alrighty. Uh, yeah, my week was a bit of a tough one, so I just have a regular, ordinary text-to-speech recap this week. <laughs> Nothing fancy or special. <laughs> text-to-speech. <laughs> Yeah, I have written a text and I will utter it as speech. <laughs> oh, you are the text to speech, okay. Yes. <laughs> that is a good idea. One I was, was kind of waiting for Microsoft Sam, but that's kind of... <laughs> Not yet. We don't have the technology. Just wait a few more seconds. Okay, but guys, write it down as a possible idea for a future mm. recap. Mm -hmm. yep. What do you mean? I already did that. <laughs> <laughs> well then, would you like recap music? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, good, because I've already put it on. <laughs> so if you said no, it would have been awkward. <laughs> Alrighty, so last time in Outlander's, Outlander's Guide to Ladaria, Tekon the Scarer and wanders around the Drow's world of the, their, its own creation. Meanwhile, in Simleolon, the party learns that Grangina had died during the war and then was revived by the deity known as the wolf. Okay, that, that's a lot. Uh, she doesn't breathe. Good to know. Uh, the magical book we've been safekeeping begins writing again after uh, some days of lingual silence and thought, uh, and they realize that they are Orm, Jamuel's Unin companion. They also remember Saskarin guiding Jamuel and Orm within the Lady's Temple until something changed and then he pushed Orm off a great height onto Jamuel and uh, that's no good. Uh, Book Orm also remembers a metal man named Orm Tinhart. Uh, remember that being an opponent of Jamuel's in some fashion? And that Jamuel has been cheating death a bunch or at least returned from death a lot in the past, but not this time. Strange. Uh, Brooke carries an unconscious Iskaren to a holding cell in the Phantom's underground tunnel system and helps Kaz recover from a deep plant-induced sleep, then asks him to join him to the Dragon Wagon. Uh, Grangina brings the governor of some Leolon, Marthillion Umarin, to the tavern, where we come up with the, you know, unhalf th truth about plants and machines within the library causing the lethal sleep. That's pretty much what happened, right? Uh, then the group splits off to help the people of some Leolon, uh, while getting a hold of some supplies. Brooke and Cass return to the tunnels below, where Brooke tells the story of what he's been through the last few weeks, including the dream, uh, where he met Sunny, and they make plans to go see Sunny the following day. Uh, Pip receives a letter from Elian, Eliana's younger son, and... Uh, this is probably bad news. His brother left Vera about a week ago as of time we read this, uh, and they have heard nothing back from him, so he might be hunting the lycanthrope that's hunting us, so we should probably just proceed as planned, right? It'll work itself mm -hmm. out. Uh, Talix receives a letter from Lady Sarabeth of the Bronze Shores in Vera, telling the results of their following investigation, with a claim that the group of Atarophili buried uh, buried Sal's body covered in the local essence Pax's outfit in a northern cemetery. And she has written her conclusion as to why the Essen people cover their form uh, on the back of the letter that Talix receives, but no one has read it just yet. Uh, and then some summoning shenanigans happen, a tressum appears, it's really cute. Uh, there's probably good shenanigans to come from that as well. 
And then the following day, a funeral procession forms in the central plaza of Samlialan, when a near dozen people passed away. A silence takes hold of the city as arch cleric of the fairy dragon, Varian Thar, arrives lonesome. He moves within the plaza, addresses the crowd, telling them the story of his childhood death, meeting with Vakunath and her animal offspring, and the joint revival with Vakunath's rebirth. Then he makes a plea to the survivors of Samlialan to celebrate life given and returned, even on the day after delivery. As Barry enchants and holds the huge diamonds, Pontifex realizes, hey, Varian's casting some, like, combination of divine and arcane magic over here. What's going on with that? That's so uh, weird. And then liquid <laughs> light within a large diamond pours into the still body in the casket. And within a minute, the person awakes and lives again. As some of the fallen are guarded by their loved ones, only a total of five are returned to life by Varian Thar's head. That's where we end the session. Jump it, jump it. Yes. Thank very you nice. very much, Sid. What was the mayor? What was the yeah. mayor's name again? The mayor's name was Marthillion <clears throat> Umaret. Marthillion. <clears throat> I'll write it as I saw it. I hope I didn't get it wrong. Oh, good oh, bad. Okay. I just oh, might oh. need to remember that. Uh, wait, that doesn't match what I have. Oh, well, <coughs> I got it wrong. Oh, there's a vowel out of place. It's Morthelian. Morthelian, aha. Good to know, <clears throat> thank you. No problem. Okay, let me bring back the scene where we were at a moment ago. The colony of Simulianon. We're tiny. You are tiny. Well, you are to scale with your surroundings. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh... Right now, Talix is kind of standing next to Varian Thar. Yeah, pretty, There's pretty close to been, him. Been kind of doing his own thing and ignoring <clears throat> Talix. Everyone, uh, the professor got closer. Um, who? Someone else was. was Brooke pretty, is yeah, close. I am. I'm basically pretty close. But you are in disguise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like magical disguise self. Yeah. Kind of thing. Disguise self. And Pip and Tekka were just staying back and watching? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, let me put this on. Oop. Hi, Julie. We're done with this track. Um, Here, let's... This is like... Where's uh, where's the stuff happening? Oh, yeah, sure. It's like, yeah, it's right over here. So, like, so something like... like this would be reasonable, and two of them yeah. are still here near the... Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Sure. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, in a matter of minutes, the mood in Simlielon's plaza has completely changed. Earlier this morning, it was filled with weeping and grieving families. But now there's laughter and disbelief. The dead walk again, weak yet smiling, and a handful of, conf of coffins now lay empty. Some elves, however, do not join the celebrations, and they defiantly protect the bodies of their loved ones from the man who just performed the miracle after miracle. <clears throat> Baryon Thar looks a little tired now, but satisfied. The chest by his side disappears with a touch of his hand. Then he turns to address the governor. Bring the, the rest of these bodies somewhere dark and dry, protected from the elements. Anyone who wishes to come back, I will bring back. However, it will take me a couple of days to save everyone, so make sure to keep the corpses safe. In the meanwhile, <clears throat> uh, you said there was a group of people who single-handedly saved the colony. Who are they? The governor at this point just points a finger at Alex and says, Well, there's one of them. 
Barry and Fawlis's gesture meets Talix's eyes and raises an eyebrow. <clears throat> Talix just raises his hand awkwardly. Sorry. <laughs> well, how convenient. Governor, we need a place where we can speak privately, this man and I. Um, the governor looks around and the points back at the, uh, at the large building that is pretty much behind all of it, this black one over here, and says, okay. uh, I can, I can get you guys a room. Just, uh, uh, sure. Follow me. Uh, what's the name of this building here? That we're going into? Ari and Thar and I going into this building? What's it called? Let me throw some notes. Give me a second. <laughs> Death no, I, Tower. <laughs> Talos is, um, like, trying to <laughs> very subtly let everyone know where he's going. <laughs> going um, so I was just, like, double-checking. You guys have been in here, actually, last time. This is the town hall. Oh, that's it. Okay. Mm. Oh. Here you go. <clears throat> I've realized the town hall is so spooky. <laughs> uh, is the governor just for for Talis to approach and Barry and Thar just begins to head in? Uh, uh, let me just stop and stretch right here <laughs> before going into this uh, town hall. Okay. I think Brook uh, approaches Pontifex and whispers, uh, I don't think I can follow him in there, but we shouldn't let him go there alone. Right. Oh, I was so conflicted of if I should leave him alone or follow him. Thank you for making the decision. Excuse me, Mr. Belly and Thor! As soon as he screams, Brook turns around. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll try to respect his wishes, but okay. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> with with yeah, Pontifex no, calling sorry. out and approaching, the governor points at him at Pontifex and starts saying, "Oh, uh, he is also." And Baron like just interrupts him like mid sentence says uh, and says, "He's coming too." <laughs> oh. That saves a bit of explanation. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> oh, like... yes, uh, you're aware of my travels with the professor here. Um, okay. <clears throat> Before going in, Professor looks back and gives a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you? Well, uh, yeah, Tekla would probably go to meet with Brooke at this point. Yeah. Uh, what is our plan? I'm not sure if we can follow them in there. I mean, we can just try and go after them and be like, yeah, we're with them, but. He shrugs. Is there any way for you to contact them? Pip, do you, does Talix still have that stone? Mm -mm. Um, maybe I could send Squeak with them. It's a good idea. <laughs> do that. Uh, um, yeah, just a rat in town hall. I'm sure I'll be fine. And squeak uh, leaps off of Pip's arm onto the ground and starts scurrying over. <clears throat> we should probably stay ready just in case they need us. He'll turn invisible. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> All right. Hi. Okay. <clears throat> So we're walking inside, I guess. Or have walked inside. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, the governor leads uh, the three of you <clears throat> and uh, to your... Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you are unaware that uh, ah, 
Squeak is also coming with. Um, he leads you up a few flights of stairs until eventually you reach a little like office looking room. And as he nervously uh, lets Hurst bar in, he asks uh, if he needs to be here. To which Byron replies, <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, to which Byron replies, if you, could, if you could gather the others who are responsible for saving the colony, that would be ideal. The, gover the governor nods and leaves the room, leaving uh, Talix and Pontifex alone with Barionthar. There's a few chairs in here. He just takes, takes place in one of them. He's, um... Um... He's much older than Talix. Uh, uh, he has approached that age where in both uh, humans and Junazi, um, he, he <clears throat> he's beginning to struggle a little bit with uh, getting around. Uh, as he cautiously takes place in, uh, in this cushion, the chair, you can see um, um, it almost feels like there is no weight upon the chair itself as he sits down. Um, he makes himself comfortable, gestures for the rest of you to also sit down. Uh, Talix will nod and take the chair closest to him. As will I. We're fighting over the same chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying and to make the it round of musical chairs suddenly, <laughs> start, suddenly begins. <laughs> Sorry, what was that with you? A round of musical <laughs> chairs begins. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I'd like to cast hold person. <laughs> <laughs> I can turn the I can turn the chair into difficult terrain. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, tell us, we'll, we'll circle around to the other side of the table. <laughs> so we're now flanking Barry and Thor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pip, you're, are you watching through Squeak's uh, eyes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so you do know that uh, uh, the governor is coming to get the three of you, basically. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure Brooke would have dropped us those guys once all of them are inside. Well, do you guys want to be found? Yeah. Well, that makes things easier for me. Uh <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's going to be a few minutes where... where uh, uh, Pontifex and Talix are alone with uh, with Baron, so let's let's just begin with that. I, so I wasn't sure if the nature of this conversation would be uh, private, best kept from those outside of the church. I well, there's much I don't know about the situation. I've only heard uh, an errant rumor. Basically, and I have a lot of questions myself, as I'm sure you do. Sir. Then let's start with the basics. What do you know? And let me <gasps> boop, start this. Oh, I only heard. Minus. What was it a week ago? DM? <laughs> Yeah, just uh, a week and a half. Okay. Well, I only heard a little more than a week ago that of the fox's parents' death, which um, that in itself challenges a lot of what I thought I knew about the gods. And apparently... My patron for this mission, uh, Gulborgok, was apprehended in connection with it. I don't know any of the details. Uh, could you perhaps enlighten me? The eerie thing about Baryanthar, he is how still he is. Uh, he doesn't even look like he's breathing. There are moments where he looks like a, just a lifeless statue. 
Uh, every once in a while there's just a moment of movement as he blinks or shifts his gaze from one of you to the other. Um, but in in the times when he's ta not talking, it feels uh, it feels off. It feels eerie. Um, as he briefly glances uh, at the entrance door and then back to you, Talix, he says, "As soon as we realized that the clerics of the Fox were losing their powers, we of course launched an investigation." It quickly became apparent that the uh, arch cleric Gulborgak, in the months leading up to the foxes, and he pauses briefly <clears throat> before he continues, to the fox's death, she has been acting in strange and unknown ways. She has been taking actions behind the council's back going to places and denying ever leaving. One such curious action was calling you away from Ladari and back to Plurina. The meeting you had with her. And he he brings his attention um, down to his side at this point and uh, he he flicks his wrist, and you've seen him do this before, and there's a chest that appears be beside him when he does. Uh, and he reaches down and opens it and begins to go through the contents, and there is a moment where you see this glistening of, uh, of uh, diamonds uh, in it uh, as he's going uh, through the contents of the chest. That meeting was something that the council was unaware of, which is why we need to know what she talked to you about. This would roughly be the time when the group, uh, the rest of the group, if they are fine with being brought into the town hall, um, would be arriving. Uh, all the governor had to do was go back to the place where he last met them, and sure enough, they were just inside the, the dragon wagon. And walk in. Is that okay with the rest of you? Do you need to ask the governor anything? Or do any preparations beforehand? Uh, as soon as... As soon as the rest of the walk in, Talix is gonna sit up very stiff. Uh... If, is Bari and Thar looking right at Talix right now, or is he looking over to them? At Talix? Okay. Uh, the only thing Pip is going to do is just dismiss Squeak entirely. Back to the beach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think Brooke would just go along. Brooke has dropped his disguise, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that goes the boss. All right. We were, uh, well, I, I was only called upon by Gulborgok. She had a special mission for me, but even I don't really understand all of the reasoning behind it. I was to meet with Jamiel Fleetfoot, and uh, well, from there complications arose. I've, I've already written back an update. I was meant to go to her. I'm not sure where it'll go now. Okay, so there's a lot to get into there. Uh, but yeah, my mission was to meet with Jamil Fleetfoot, and from there, set off into central Ladaria somewhere. Somewhere beyond the peninsula. And... Explore the terrain. Um, but all of that uh, was stopped short. I couldn't even fulfill the first part of the mission, because... Instead, I found... What seemed to be Jamiel Fleetfoot's final resting place. I found his body. Oh, that's also where I met the rest of these folks. Fair enough. 
for the first time, Barium brings his gaze to the rest of the group. Um, can you, can you, can you all roll an insight check? Mm -hmm. Instead oh, of checking, cool. uh, Talix isn't paying attention to Varian right now. He's paying attention to Brooke. Does Brooke still wear the seed? Well, he would have pecked it away. But he has <laughs> so it's it not. It's not plainly visible. No, it it is basically never plainly visible. It would be like below the shirt. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. But this time he has probably tucked it away in one of his pockets. Oh, I think I did the thing again. Okay. Um. It's plain for everyone to see that. Uh, um. It's plain for everyone to see that Baron remembers the three of you. Um. But beyond that, uh, um, Pontifex, you're the only oh one who Oh my god. Gets... You guys wouldn't have met him in person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, fuck, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, Pontifex, <gasps> to you, there is, uh, um, you pick up on this feeling like, like he knew. This isn't, uh, uh, a surprise to him to see that this group is, um, all together and working as one. <clears throat> okay. Uh, as Byron brings his attention back to Talix, he nods and says, Words of Jamio's fate have reached my ears. Your um. job... Oh, uh, go, go ahead. Um, if you've read my letter, you may have also read that we found a book that we at first believed might contain his soul. It seemed to contain some memories and some intelligence and writes words on its own. That, it seems, is not the case. However, as I've uncovered more information about Chamuel, it seems he is indeed, or was perhaps, a very potent user of magic, and I don't believe he was a cleric, correct? To my knowledge, I have never heard of Jamuel Fleetfoot displaying any divine magic. Well, whatever is in the book seems to have known him. Uh, well, if in fact it claims to be his uh, animal companion, which raises some questions, but uh, ultimately it's said that he has died and returned from the dead before and it believes that he could do so again. So, uh, perhaps Jamil can still be found. Uh, which is even more important to me now, because from what I've gathered, it seems that this mission I went on was not actually Gulvorgok's idea, but Jamil's. So, I'm not really sure what the nature of my mission was here anymore, and, uh, well, that's why I find myself with many more questions than answers, but I've been trying to find it out. Byron leans forward a little bit. You believe that Jamiel Fleetfoot might have an idea as to what exactly Gulborgak was up to. Yes, I think he would have more than an idea. It seemed to be... I was given, in a place in Lodoria, something of a vision. I'm not... Well... 
I'm not completely sure of its ferocity, but uh, it's something that the rest of these folks can all vouch for. Uh, in fact, the professor here wrote it down for me. Uh, yes, of course I did. Um, it seemed to be a vision of Jamiel as he explained Well, somehow, he seemed to say that he had a way of speaking to the fox. It must have been from a while ago. I can only assume he somehow knew Gobor Gok. It's... Well, I don't know much more than that. Talix Moyer, the greatest priority of the Jade Council in, in Ledaria is to establish once and for all either the absence or presence of a being similar to Vakanath. We need to make sure of whether Lidaria is a stable place, a world that will not be torn apart by the forces of the, of the Sea of Chaos. Plurina, of course, has Vakanath, but as far as we can see with our naked eye, there is no such being holding the planes of Ladaria together. These earthquakes that we have been experiencing seem to further prove that Ladaria is indeed unstable. Now, my theory, if you will entertain me, and it's at this moment that the governor comes back in, and he, and there's Gringina with him. And the governor um, says, uh, she also helped with saving the colony. And uh, Baron just does a brief dismissive gesture and says, she's not needed. And Gringina very awkwardly looks at everyone turns around and walks back out. And the governor is a little perplexed by this, but he just nods and closes the door. <laughs> uh, the Mario continues. Considering that our priority is to locate or prove the absence of something or someone like Vakanath on Lidaria. The fact that you were called away from your job, brought back to Plurina, asked to speak with perhaps uh, the most knowledgeable man about everything having to do with Lidaria, and then sent back, makes me think that Jamiel might have made a discovery in that regard. And that for some reason, my colleague wanted to keep that discovery from the rest of us. And then, uh, as he leans a little bit f uh, forward and he makes eye contact with Talix, just looking intensely at him, he says, Are you sure that she made no mention of what exactly you and Jamil Fleetfoot were to do here? Dice are rolling. No, that's not the case. Sir. Uh, there was mention. But I'm a little conflicted about doing it. 
if Jamiel made a discovery in that regard, it seems that he might have discovered there was no such being. Are you aware of... Well, you're certainly aware of some of the lore of the fox uh, that he acquired the fruits from Vakanoth herself. He stays silent, he just lets you continue. I was going to look around at everyone else. She, she gave me... She gave me a seed. A seed that she told me came from Vakanoth. I was planted here. Somewhere in the middle of the, of the continent. Jamiel is the one who seems to have uh, come up with this plan. He said that it was necessary in order to save Lidaria. That otherwise it would crumble into the sea. To Pip, uh, Pontifex, and Brook. Uh... Um, the fact that there is any movement to uh, Barion's form um, is a pretty clear indication that uh, uh, he is surprised by this. This is new information to him. Did he have? Okay. No, no, I meant did he, did, did he move or did he not move? He didn't move. move. Yeah. Uh, okay. There was like, you know, just a yeah, yeah. minimal uh shift to his position. Ah, uh, eyes narrowed ever so slightly. Uh, his, his gaze just unfocused for a moment. Um, it's, it's subtle, but some of you guys picked up on it. Um... To seed. Is it currently in your possession? It is not in my own possession. Not my... I asked my companions to keep it safe for me. Brian's gaze begins to shift between uh, uh, the rest of the people present. I implore you, just... May we have permission to keep it until we learn more about the situation. Roll a persuasion check, Alex. Oh no. Team. Allow me to make this decision after I see the item in question. If I may. And he like extends just uh, his arm outward, hand facing upward. Just tell no. Me. Oh. <laughs> 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 Get in there. You have not stated your motive, your means. We have no reason to trust you with this knowledge. I actually agree. I actually agree with my friend Tekka. Okay. 
Fire's hand shakes for a moment and he pulls it back. He just rests it on one of his knees, um, looking intensely at Tekka first, then Brooke, then back to Tekka. Uh, you see, uh, Tekka, you're, you're, you're used to this at this point, the way people look at you, um, the way their eyes move up towards your horns, um, down at your, at your tail, um, for even those who try to hide it, usually notice how people instinctively just uh, are drawn to your unusual features and then uh, generally end up just averting their eyes. Um, but Baryon, he's, he's taking it all in. Um, he seems to have never seen one of your kind before. How does he look like disgusted, surprised, happy, sad? <laughs> Neutral. Does he have a mood ring on? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> there is no. He's back to just that the e eerie stillness of his. Uh, <laughs> there is just hardly any movement to him besides just the direction he's looking at. Be I... Before things get out of hand, uh, allow me to speak for a moment. Uh, perhaps. Our friend Telex here uh, believes in you as a person uh, much more than the others here. Um, you should understand, uh, given the importance of what it is that we have, uh, their reluctance to trust someone uh, that they have not met. Uh, so, in the interest of learning more about you, perhaps, uh, shall we talk about another subject for a moment? We spoke of uh, Jemuel Fleetfoot uh, earlier uh, with uh, some access to magic of some sorts, uh, but he was not a cleric, to your knowledge. Uh, as I'm quite sure you understand, uh, divine is not the only magic that can accomplish great things. What would your opinions be or thoughts regarding Jemuel's access to arcane magic? <laughs> I recognize that I have been asking plenty of questions and as he is still looking at Tekka and you deserve some answers of your own very well and now he finally brings that his attention to Pontifex in my opinion it is only natural that it will be an exceptional individual, the one to make a discovery, such as this one. And he sort of, sort of like this is like wide gesture, uh, point, like pointing at everything around the guys, uh, uh, as he obviously refers to to the Daria itself, to just the whole continent that you are on. It just so happens that my presence within the Jade Council is perhaps the most peculiar one. I was the first Genazi to ever join the Council, and one of the very first few, one of the very first few members to display the kind of magic that uh, the Alliance would consider to be lesser the fools that they are <laughs> Tal is just he's disappearing into his head it's just <laughs> over his face at this point <laughs> I think I put that uh, <laughs> comment by Pontifex Brooke would definitely smile a little bit Okay. Oh, wow. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whenever there is a long pause, I'm either going through my notes or rolling some dice. Uh, hmm. Baryon doesn't react 
to Pontifex's statement, except there is just a brief raising of an eyebrow. Uh, to some of you, this might almost come across as amusement, though that feels a little out of character from him. Either way, like I said, it would take an exceptional individual to make a discovery this monumental. I am not as surprised to hear that Jamil has cheated death in one way or another, as others might be, though it is indeed new information to me. Uh, you said this uh, this individual is on the older side, yeah? Mm -hmm. Of like course, nowhere near. Side. Yeah, nowhere near as old as Pontifex, of course. But for his right, right. race, pretty old. Um, How old do Genesis get? Uh, Genesis roughly age like humans do. Okay. So you know he has. Uh, he's probably in the second half of his uh, of his century. Yeah. Well, perhaps, uh, rather than focusing on Jemuel himself, perhaps we should uh, turn our attention to those he may have worked with or conspired with. Uh, I have strong reason to believe I am aware of three such individuals, two of which were people like me. Am I ringing any bells in your head? I believe I am unaware of what you might be me talking about. Ah, then it is of no concern to you. Eh. Jamil's actions and the people he has interacted with are most definitely of my concern, considering that he appears to be the only person in the world who could shed any light on what Gul Borgak was exactly up to. And this perhaps makes it easier. Uh, I believe that should you find these two uh, Vidalkin that were working with him, that would be your best chance. Though, from what I understand, they might be exceptionally difficult to find. Do we at the very least know what continent they are located on? No. What of their names? Descriptions? I, uh, well, we don't know for sure, but... Last we knew, they were on Ladoria with Jamil. Uh, we we're sh fairly certain that Jamil himself is somewhere on this continent still, but we're still following clues. <laughs> Do you have names? We don't. Then I will do everything in my power to find these Vidalkin. To my knowledge, there were... There was only one in Ladaria. Finding others should be easy enough. Where... Uh, where would you begin with something like that? We've been having a hard time tracking people here who don't want to be found anyway. 
Every task begins by consulting the gods. Right. In dreams, then. Something that uh, you are unable to do, if I remember correctly. That is correct. Your appearance before the Jade Council was an interesting one. One that left a strong impression on many of us. I did not expect to meet again under these strange circumstances. But if there is one thing I know about you, Talix Moir, is that you are loyal to the Council. And you are loyal to the gods. That is what I believed as I made my journey across the Sea of Chaos. It is unprecedented, uh, unprecedented for a member of the Council to be absent from Plurna for as long as I am bound to be. I trust that at the end of this conversation, I will have the answers I seek. Which is why I need to take a closer look at this item of yours. Mm. Bear with me for a moment. Uh, if you would have us bear something to you so important, as I'm sure you understand, uh, and you seem to understand our reluctance to do so, uh, would you perhaps allow me one... Uh, instance of security I'm simply going to make sure there are no malicious intents coming from you I would ask that you do not resist this process oh god <laughs> <laughs> I am of course asking for your uh, consent first I would never do this to a cleric as one such as you who dabbles in magic such as I it would be rude <laughs> from one aged man to another. Do Roll this a persuasion and I believe we will be satisfied. Okay, sure. Now one, please now one. God, I hope now. <laughs> eh. Close. Uh, I'm actually going to inspiration dice that. Let's go. I have a thought spiration for little. just such a thing. Okay, oh yeah. Makes sense. How good choice, good choice, Vince Bernard. He's so tiny. Go. Let's go. Oh, e uh oh. <laughs> Slightly better. Eleven. I'll be taking that. Uh, do I badonk a donk this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. You don't want a badonkadonk, Barbarian? I think I have to save the badonkadonk for something critical. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, peering into the mind of an arch cleric is not exactly critical, I guess. No. It's not? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't know, gang. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> Can no, you, you can use your inspiration. It's fine. I don't, I don't know. There's normally uh, holding more than one inspiration is impossible, so there aren't rules for it. But yeah, I'd say just just let fate leave fate in the dice. You know? I'm breaking all the rules. <laughs> I don't believe in fate. I believe in will. <laughs> uh, okay, nah, I'll let the eleven sit. Sure, see him. Okay, let me just- I'm just going through this... Just going through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's... done. <laughs> um, as... Baryon... straightens himself on the chair, straightens his posture, 
He nods and says, You have my permission. Hopefully this benefits us both. Uh, and I'm going to detect thoughts and immediately pry as deep as I possibly can. <laughs> okay. On to facts. Uh, I need uh, you to roll an arcana check. Nope. Uh, question. Mm -hmm. We did we level? We did level, yeah? Yeah. 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 Or level five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just making sure that it's actually in effect because it affected my arcana. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You've had a long okay, rest. Cool, cool. Yeah. Want to fix you, You've done this do many like times. Um, on many different kinds of people. Not always with consent, uh, but <laughs> you know to spell exceptionally well. And you've had plenty of experience with it. And the moment when uh, um, your thoughts begin to dive into the arch cleric's mind, um, everything feels different. Something about him, something about the, the way his mind is structured, perhaps, uh, something maybe about his magic or about his soul or about his connection to the gods, uh, makes your spell resonate a little bit differently. And you feel a resistance that uh, doesn't necessarily come from him. Um, but it's, it's like it takes you extra effort to actually get where you want to get. And uh, there comes a moment when you are barred from proceeding any further. Um, and you, you hesitate for a moment. And then whatever that, that um, blockage was, it is removed. And you are free to proceed. Within the mind of the arch cleric uh, Baryanthar, um, you sense worry above all else. Despite his composure, there is something almost like a fear within him uh, that seems to be permeating everything he says and everything he does. Uh, and his fear doesn't come from a, a a single source that you can um, that you can find, but it's it's a it's a fear that is about everything that surrounds him. He fears this world. He fears that the very land he walks on, uh, the sky above his head, all of it could collapse at any moment. This man is convinced that uh, Lidaria is not safe. And yet, he is here, and he is here to get to the bottom of this. If there is something that can uh, stop Lidaria from falling apart, it is something he needs to learn. And as his thoughts, his fears, his emotions all um, encompass, uh, they, they all gather around this one idea, the thought that this could be it. This thing that Alex just mentioned might be the key. You sense that his curiosity, his desire uh, to see what it is and what it actually does and um, hope that it can do something about the situation, it all converges on the desire to hold this thing. But you sense no malice in terms of uh, whether he will take it and, and keep it. There is a desire to do so, but it's, a, it's an instinctual one that he seems to be pushing away from himself. Make of that what you will. Right, well, this is uh, what I am seeing. He sets some concerns at rest, but... Uh... Allow me to ask you a few leading questions whilst I am in here for my own uh, 
peace of mind. What I saw you do in the town with the raising of the dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we exploiting that. <laughs> what I saw you do in town with the raising of the dead. Uh, I believe you know as well as I do that that was not simply divine magic as others would believe. You are using the arcane as well in interesting ways, ways that are explicitly interesting to me. So what are your thoughts on the arcane? <laughs> so what are you doing? This isn't what you said you'd be doing. I've got the answers for what I said I was doing. Now I am doing more. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I've got more answers. I am looking for mine. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> do not alter the deal further. <laughs> um, the moment I'll uh... blackmail you with your deepest darkest <laughs> secrets, you paranoid scared the cat. <laughs> the, the 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 moment uh, um you mention the uh, what he did in the plaza, you have the instinctive reaction of these thoughts that you're you're diving into is uh, uh, perplexity. He's not really sure where you're bringing it up. And then when you mention uh, the kind of magic uh, he used, you sense a you sense shock. Uh, and then uh, a feeling of uh, um of worry and uh, uh, looking for the right word hmm. yeah it's shock worry um something almost like fear and then the the connection between the two of you is abruptly ended um, in a way you've never experienced before the way that Baryon chases you out of his mind uh, is new to me to you uh, it's instantaneous and it actually brings you like a, a sudden uh, slight headache um, it's it was unpleasant it was very abrupt as I am known to be um, for the first time, the rest of you see Baryon actually taking a breath, a deep one, and then he holds it, and uh, he holds it for an uncomfortable amount of time, and he doesn't really exhale, he just starts talking at some point. I think this is unrelated to the matter at hand. I assure you it is not. Uh, Pip telepathically shoves Potifex's foot under the table. <laughs> then perhaps we can have an exchange. Allow me to see the seed, and I will give you. I will give you the answers you seek. I don't think that is a decision for him to make by himself. So you should probably bargain with all of us instead of only him. Then Don't what? understand me. An answer for me. each of you? <laughs> we'll see what the others want. Like, don't understand me wrong, but unlike Talix, I'm not part of the Jade Alliance. And neither do I consider myself part of the Moonwatch either anymore. I have left Clerna behind me and am now a phantom here on Daria, right? Which. Not sure if you've known, but basically means I don't really have to listen to anyone. Not even Bruno for himself. Not even my parents. <laughs> yeah, not even my parents. <laughs> if I had any. <laughs> like, I am, depending on what Pontifex and the others think, I'm willing to let you see the thing. But, in my opinion, it should stop at seeing. Hmm. 
I will not be taking the item away from you, if that is the source of your concern. From what I saw, that is true. So watching it closely doesn't help, isn't enough? You have to touch it? I do intend to sense what kind of magic, if any, is upon it. I do intend to analyze it, to learn what it is, where it comes from. How long will that take? Um, scroll, scroll, scroll. One minute. He takes a deep breath, looks at the others. Well? Pontifex, you have looked into his mind. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. I, I was lost in it. Yes, from what I saw before I changed the subject, uh, our friend here is concerned for uh, Ladaria specifically believes that uh, it is unstable and could collapse at any moment and feels that the seed may be perhaps the thing that can stabilize the region and prevent its collapse. Uh, I sensed no indications of malice uh, or intent to steal. Uh, just fears that were momentarily subsided with a thought of hope. Well, I am inclined to believe him uh, wholeheartedly, and as one with similar uh, methodology to myself, I feel he is not afraid to break some rules to uh, accomplish what he is looking for. And I believe what he is looking for is something good. I, I am not scared, Professor. Still, the rest of the council, none of them agreed to come here. I was the only one who offered. Why do you uh, think that is, if you don't mind me asking? They are the ones who are afraid. Of Ladaria? Or just the potential collapse? Their fears might be different from person to person. Some might just be afraid of the travel, the trip across the Sea of Chaos. Some might be afraid of Ladaria and its instability. Others might be afraid of the people who already live here. Some might just not like the idea of being so far from home, from Plurna for so long but I am here Brooke nods well we do share one thing I'm concerned for I'm concerned for Lidari as well so looking at it at least from my perspective should be okay and I look at the others <laughs> Pip is pensive but makes no move to stop anyone. There is a um, there is a nearby window, and you guys are a few floors up, so you're like far above the the the, the ground. Uh, but there is a tapping on the window, and you all turn to see a white tressim just tapping her paw against the glass. Uh, professor. Hey, what? <laughs> just, <laughs> Alex just jerks his head to the side, gesturing to the window. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I 
All right, if no one is against it. Uh, Barry, I'm sorry. Do you mind if I keep my hand on the thing while you're inspected? Don't get me wrong. I do believe your words and definitely believe Pontifex's ability to read the mind. <laughs> but better safe than sorry. I'm going over to the window. <laughs> Uh, are you opening it? I suppose. Okay. You open a window and he tries and flies in and lands on your head. What do you want? She purrs. Ah, fine. You win this time. <laughs> <laughs> He'll hobble back into the room mm. with a winged cat on his head and sit back down. Pay her no mind. <laughs> uh, Barion pays her no mind, and instead of uh, uh, <laughs> still speaking uh, to, to Brooke, uh, he considers that Brooke roll a real persuasion check. It's like he has an option. <laughs> well, and does a negative one do it? That's the fun part. It Did does. Hey, uh, let's go. The DC rest was of you negative five. <laughs> as Barion nods and agrees to um, to Brooke's request, it feels like he's holding back something there's um just this moment where uh there's a slight smile on his lips who's he said who's he said flower of the group that's pontifex my passive insight is 16. <laughs> 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 you call out passes. We don't want to roll anymore. <laughs> it was an overflow error. Or an underflow. Underflow, that's the word. Ah, uh, that's funny. Alright, if he isn't getting warned, he will take one last look at the group to see if anyone wants to stop him. And if that isn't happening. I nope. Think, I guess we're letting that happen. As I said, I believe him. And okay. I hope that he upholds his end of the deal. Then Brooke will take off his bandana and bind it around his right hand and then take out the seed and bind the other end of the bandana towards this seed or usually the rope or whatever it was before would be and then hold it up in front of Stand up, go to Barry and Sar, and hold it up in front of him. Tekka runs and grabs it. <laughs> <laughs> good luck getting it off of me! <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, okay. I have read this before. First, they ask a moment to only see without touch. Then a day inspect then they ask no longer they hold it for themselves i will keep my hand on it he shouldn't be able to take it from that bandana and um, well maybe not with his physical strengths don't do it The others do nothing to stop him, right? Then you uh, will... Alex yeah? is going to uh, look into his amber and just ask Vakanoth for any sort of guidance. Does anything <laughs> come about? Any any nagging feeling in his head? Just a long shot. You know, out of character, Talix did get a message from you know, 
I know. That's I'm not I'm not sure which way to take this. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of Vakanath referring to Talix as bro. <laughs> Pip at this point has just stood up and has has stepped back a little bit, looking between both Tekka and Brooke, and then over to Talix, and and then to Barry and Thar, and is just has no idea what to do, but does uh, summon back the invisible squeak to his shoulder. <clears throat> Tekka, um, I'm sorry, but we did make it clear that if we make a decision about the thing, it's a group decision. And not an individual one. Teacher, there is a flaw to your trick, to your magic. I'm sure there are. I'm just unaware of them. The arch cleric today is not the arch cleric tomorrow. Once he sees and learns, you will not know his intent. This is true. But focusing on the what could be instead of the what is is a dangerous path to take. It is when one goes from caution to paranoia. I stand by, this, by my decision. Then Brook nods and walks towards Baron Sar. That would actually be ten. And Tech is still gripping the going. seed, right? Tech uh, loses his grip. I have said what I feel is right. I see it is not an end. And he steps away. <clears throat> I... I just would like to reaffirm I sincerely believe that Valkanoth wants me to keep this safe. We don't intend to do anything rash with it. We just seek to learn more before we proceed. Um, Talik says you seek guidance from within. Uh, a sign. Anything. Anything that could tell you what you should be doing. There is nothing. You're far from home. So, please, uh, learn what you need to learn, but please just allow us to keep it. I mean, and he stops for a second, we will keep it. Yeah. He only gets to look. Otherwise, this isn't a deal. Right, Baron? You will keep it. Wellbrook will still walk towards Baron, but hold, shows it to him, and still hold on to the seed. Mm -hmm. uh, Pontifex, a few a few moments ago, um, the uh, the tressim that was just resting on your head seemed to suddenly get her interest got caught by something. And at first, you're not really sure why, but then she starts uh, she starts bothering Pip, uh, meowing at him, um, and. Uh, flying up to his head and tapping his shoulder, and you have an idea of why she is restless. Uh, I'm gonna communicate with her telepathically, because I can do that. <laughs> Say, what, what are you after? I'm not wanting to, like, interrupt uh, Brooke's thing by speaking out loud. Mm. Uh, from her, you get this feeling of... Uh, um, uh, playfulness? Squeak bites her. <laughs> 
then a brief moment, uh, a brief moment of, of pain and annoyance, um, and uh, she she's very much in hunting mode at this moment, fighting something you that you cannot see. You see her little you paw cut it out for like out. five minutes. <laughs> 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 yeah, sure, he'll, uh, uh, oh, no, I think he's, uh, he, he's, he's telling her she can cut out for, for a while. How does she respond? Like, what's the feedback? Is this a yes or a no? Roll an animal handling check. <laughs> it's all happening while Barionthar <laughs> is uh, reaching into his chest, uh, and... Why am uh, I good at this? From, <laughs> I don't know. Um, he's reaching into his chest, and he... <laughs> <laughs> Why am I sick of this? <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, from it, uh, uh, he pulls out uh, um, another gemstone. This one, this one is uh, uh, deep red in color, and there is a there is a shimmer within it. Uh, um, very obviously magical uh, in some manner or another. Um. Pontifex the Tresim is very annoyed that uh, um, you're telling her what to do, but... I brought you into <laughs> this world, I will take you out of it with just as much ease. But... <laughs> she doesn't seem... You get the feeling that she's trying to make you think that she wasn't that interested on uh, um, catching Squeak anyway. Not um, like I wanted it anyways. And she'll, yeah, she'll just lay down on the floor. Annoyed, the tail whip in the air, but... Uh, Calm. Um, and before everyone's eyes, this is a familiar sight uh, as Barion puts a hand over the seed. Um, not even a hand, just a single finger, just an index finger. And with the other hand, he crushes the ruby. And uh, whatever magic was contained within uh, is released. Ah, uh, Brooke. I need you to roll a constitution saving throw. Are you fucking kidding me? <gasps> Get your inspirations for me ready! <laughs> 15. Does that save? That's pretty good. Hmm. Probably not. Probably not. I don't think it's gonna be the DC of an arch cleric, but you know. Here! Take this! <laughs> Rolling, I'm rolling! We get to know if it saves before he rerolls. Oh, oh. oh damn. Uh, well, he does not. Uh oh. Dennis! <laughs> Dennis! Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> sitcom moment. I trusted Barry and Thar. <laughs> Wait, why do you not have proficiency in con saves? Good question. <laughs> Take it up with Mercer. Okay. Um, I didn't think I'd get to do this, actually, so... <laughs> why don't we take a ten-minute break? What? No! <laughs> Tell us what happens what first. What does he Come do? On. So I can prepare this. Prepare? Just... Is it gonna take... <laughs> she has to consult her... I just want to make sure Maybe I don't get this map. wrong. <laughs> Plus, I have to use the bathroom. Ah! I'll see you in 10 I mean, minutes! We took so many precautions. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! What, what more could we have done? I'll see you in a little bit. Tekka is just rolling his R's, or his eyes so uh, hard. <laughs> that, first, that first roll I made, I was like, You rascal! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bringing back the stream, here we are. Brooke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you are a man with a strong body and a strong mind. Um, and yet, what happens uh, the moment when that ruby is shattered uh, is this feeling of uh, lack of gravity and being thrust upward, downward, uh, in many directions over and over and you, you begin to feel sick and uh, you're 
Not entirely sure really what's happening, but uh, you're also feeling the sense of stillness? Um, your body's not really moving, you're not changing uh, position. Um, you still feel your, your hand beneath the, uh, the precious seed, um, but your eyes, they see something very different. Uh, your eyes see an immense tree and the shapes upon this tree moving, um, blurry. No matter how hard you try to focus on, on them, they're, they remain um, impossible for you to, to, to grasp. Um, you feel the presence of Baryanthar nearby, uh, and with your vision being so clouded, you're not entirely sure how close or how far he is. Sometimes his voice echoes as if it's coming from really far away, but you also feel like the two of you are um, almost holding hands in the way that both of you are in touch with this one seed. Um, and as you look up at this immense tree, you feel insignificant compared to the beings that stand before you. One of these shapeless forms uh, approaches a little bit, and you can't quite tell what it is, you can't tell who it is, you can't even tell how far it is, or if it's really coming close to you or perhaps moving away from you. But there is an interaction between it and Baryon. You hear Baryon speak, but uh, your head hurts, your ears um there's this this constant uh, sound like a whistle uh, and you can be barely hear anything beyond it uh, you feel like there is a question that is being posed and uh, there is a hesitant hesitant answer uh until your attention shifts back to the tree and you see other shapes moving in her branches and then the branches themselves move the tree moves and you can feel the vastness of it the power that comes from it and something you feel this sense of uh, fear that doesn't come from you uh, perhaps it's uh, uh, the way that you and Baryon are currently connected through this seed. But you feel what he feels, and there's shock and fear that comes from him. As the tree moves, the branches wrap themselves really close to the two of you until there's nothing you can see but these branches and these leaves as big as you are. And you sense... A voice unlike any other. Uh, it, the power of this voice shakes you to your very core. You've never heard anything, anything remotely close to what you're hearing now. And you feel your spirit shivering, your soul standing before a power unlike any other. And then when you open your eyes, you take... 15 points of psychic damage. Uh, uh -huh. and you feel yourself uh, um, back here. You said 15 or 15? 15. 15. <laughs> the rest of you <clears throat> only saw Baryon close his eyes. Five seconds later, he opens them again, but then his expression shifts. He moves his hand away from the seed as if he burned himself on it uh, and Brook himself um, loses his balance and just uh, ends up stepping backward until he hits the wall. But the seed is still safely in his hands. What did he do, Baryon? What was this? For the first time, Baryon is breathing quickly and heavily. His eyes are wide for a moment, but he's quick to compose himself. In only a matter of seconds, he's back to his calm self. And he um, lowers himself back into the chair he was occupying before, and with a shaky hand, he closes the lid of the chest, takes another deep, deep breath, and says, like I explained earlier, Every plan begins with consulting the gods. Okay. What? 
What did they say? I couldn't really make it out. Hmm. You weren't supposed to. <clears throat> and as he brings his attention to Talix, he says, You must keep it safe. I... I will. But Vakanath's will is very clear on this. As for what I will be telling the rest of the council, I suppose I have a few months to figure it out. Um, in the future, should I report to you on these matters? It appears that my plan for the time being is to look for these Vidalkin that the professor here mentioned. Which means I will be staying in Ladaria for longer than I had originally planned. So yes, any progress towards learning what Jamuel, or Gul Borgak for that matter, were up to would be most appreciated. I would wish for you to take my world point info uh, in the event that you find either or both of these Vedalkin. Uh, I would wish for you to contact me immediately. Right. I think I've heard of this world point. Uh, show me. And he'll pull out his uh, his world point card. It is like a mailing service, uh, but he's relatively expeditious. Uh, I'm sure there is one you can go and register here in uh, Simle Lawn to get your own. <clears throat> oh yeah, Baron. <clears throat> Almost. Awkwardly, um, his hands are shaking a bit more than they were before, uh, but he takes note of your, your contact info uh, and nods at your explanation. Now about what we were talking of earlier, you have seen the seed? Uh, can you repeat that, Matt? Sorry. Uh, what we spoke of earlier. Uh, you have now seen the seed. We have uh, pulled it our end of the bargain. I had questions that were left unanswered. Baryon repositions himself slightly on, in the chair. Um, this time sinking a, bit, a little bit heavier into the cushions. And he nods. Ask. When you raised the bodies earlier, you were not just using divine magic, you were incorporating some aspects of the arcane into them. Uh, I am very interested in what you do. It is what I have considered to be my life's work. And to see someone uh, such as yourself with such high esteem amongst the, the clerics to be doing something like me is uh well there is not a word for it but unheard of know how you do it what would brought be the you term. to this well a secret for a secret magic runs in my family of course it uh, runs in every Genazi, but in my case, it is stronger. The fact that I have embraced faith does not mean I am letting go of my roots. I can do both. 
Is it so strange that I would be able to do both simultaneously? No, 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 not at all. That is exactly my point. But uh, it is counter to what the Alliance would have one belief. We are told that there are two uh, opposite forces uh, counteracting one another. They cannot coexist in such. Times but, have changed. The war is over. And now there is a Janazi on the council. Indeed, the times have changed. <clears throat> yeah. I suppose I should press you no further, but... Uh, if, if you want to learn what I do, it cannot be taught. It is in the blood. You either have it or you don't. No, I understand. It's, uh, it's just rare to find one like me. Well, not exactly like me, but one who thinks like me. Can you roll another insight check for me, Matt? I can't. Wow, your rolls. Yeah, killing it. You didn't expect today that, uh, <clears throat> of all things, you'd, uh, uh, of all emotions you'd see on the Arch Cleric's face, you'd catch a glimpse of almost kinship. You'd exchange a glance, the kind that uh, um, carries more um, information than it would normally. Unlike the two of you, uh, get something that nobody else does. Right, well, uh, best of luck on your search for uh, the Vedalkin and uh, whatever other endeavors you may embark upon. And he'll he'll hold out his hand. Uh, Barin will lean forward on his chair, uh, on, on his chair and uh, shake your hand. Right, well, uh, I am satisfied, everyone. We had what we came for. I guess so. Th thank you, sir. Traveling between Lidari and Plurna takes about three months. I've been missing from Plurna for that long. And uh, even if I were to leave right away, <clears throat> it would be three more months before anyone back home would hear about my discoveries. Do what you must within that time frame, if possible. Oh. Let's see. <clears throat> what are we expected to happen once the rest of... Well, once Plurna learns about your discoveries? At that point... That will be in the Council's hands. I'm only one of many voices. The exception is that while I am here, I cannot consult with them, and my actions are my own. Well, if you talk with the Council in three months, please keep in mind that there are not only Plurnans inhabiting Ladaria, they are natives too, and they should be put into consideration no matter what decision you come to. This is not our land, it's there. All I can say is that my search for these Vedalkin is bound to keep me here longer than originally planned. Understood. Talex Moyer? <clears throat> yes. People who cannot remember their dreams are exceptionally rare in history. 
and yet those who have been documented to exist have always risen to do great things and change the fate of the world. I am curious to see if you will be one such person. Who else do you know of? Perhaps one of the most famous examples is that of Emil Zistar. Really? I didn't know. It isn't common knowledge. That's the uh, the guy who sacrificed himself, so mm -hmm. he brought back. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Perhaps those who cannot hear the voices of the gods work twice as hard to seek them out. Hmm. Sounds about right. Baryon um, begins to stand. The oh, chest that's tons. been uh, uh, to his side is gone. Um, it looks at all of you. He seems ready to leave. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's leave, I guess. He is a V first out of the door and as soon as he steps out he uh he said jerks to the side uh, uh, something catching his attention and you hear just a a slight ah coming from uh, someone directly outside uh and <laughs> for a moment you just see him frozen in the entrance way and then he walks off uh grangina awkwardly peers uh, into the room that the rest of you are in and uh, uh clearly with absolutely no idea of what the hell just happened she just says uh, did everything go okay? Are you <laughs> eavesdropping? No. Insight check. <laughs> Doesn't look like she was. Well, um, uh, sorry, let me face. elaborate on that. Uh, the expression on her face seems genuinely confused. Uh, in any case... It, it's a matter of concern in the, our mission here. <laughs> okay. Mission. become our mission. Alright. Uh, look, I don't think I was supposed to be involved in any of this. The governor just said that Barin wanted to see everyone who did stuff for the city, and now I'm here. And then he was Barin was like, "Nope." So I'm just. There was uh, there was no reward or anything like that. Mm, well, I got rewarded. Shame, you did. Yeah, the mayor guy said, you know, take anything you want. Basically, just take whatever you want. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I, I got that too. That's um, that's fine. I didn't, I didn't really need. I mean, I just oh. asked for a favor, uh, for the future. Mm. You know, an I O U. So um, I'll be leaving soon. Oh, where to? Reports to your commander. Ah, uh, yes, and, you know, so I'll, I'll be off uh, to Erka, and um, I don't know if I'll ever see you again, but... Um, hey, we're going there at some point. No? Oh. There's, there's a toy store there. Uh, <laughs> right. Among I, other I, things. Yeah, I think, yeah, that, that, that rings a bell. Okay, well... Cool. Um, then... well, cool. Well, hey, I'll I'll ask you since since Pontifex won't. Um, do you have a world point card? <laughs> since Pontifex won't. True. Um, yeah, you 
could help us out and yeah well you did you... seem to have the right mind about our discovery as well so i'm willing to share as well oh uh yeah you you guys are cool sure also, if you hear anything about metal animals around that area, I hear that there's been some sightings there. Oh, um, an animal? I don't know, not part animal, part uh, part person? Yeah, I've heard of that. Made of metal? Uh-huh. Interesting. Um... There's hmm. this... large... Uh, there, there's all these these hills between Simlielon and and uh, Buthialera, um, north of Erka. There is no road connecting the the, the two. Um, but if you were crazy enough to decide to just travel straight west from Simlielon for long enough, you're eventually bound to to meet him. So I'm told. Yeah. Uh, Buthialera. What sort of colony is that? Um, oh, I've, no I've noticed it on the map here, but it doesn't, it seems so out of the way, and no roads? Fringina doesn't actually know um, what uh, uh, country is found in Boothialera, so she just shrugs. Huh? Never been there. Would any of us know? The only one who has a chance of knowing would be Talix. Oh, what? <laughs> okay. uh, just roll a history check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. I, I already remember. said. <laughs> wait, Brook also uh, could have a chance, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Straight check? What check? History. Is. Oh! There you go. That's my boy. <laughs> yeah. That's the man who challenged me to dragon chess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Buthilera is another uh, Svarda colony. Hmm. Um, it is along with another one called... I... Hmm? Uh, wait, how did I decide to pronounce this? It's Yolia. Uh, it, it is alongside Yolia, one of the uh, three colonists that is right at the edge of what is considered to be the, the peninsula, and like as how it is basically as far as Plurinans can go, uh, just a few feet further, and that's where um, they're not allowed to build anymore. There's like just a line of. Angry Ladarians with bows <laughs> just pointed. Uh, Brooke knows that it's uh, this is, uh, there is a mountain range. Um, here, let me pack this up uh, and just show you. Uh, but there is a mountain range that is kind of considered to be the uh, the edge of the peninsula, and that counts as like the physical barrier between where you can go and where you can't, and it's somewhat like this. <clears throat> Well, Telix, to answer your question, it's a Swarden colony. Huh. Wait, which one's the Swarden colony? Is it Yolia or... or Uthialera is... is both both okay. Swarden. You said they both are, right? Oh, they both are, okay. No, 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 uh, they both they both are the call... Uh, sorry. Misworded. Uh, they are both on the edge of the peninsula. Boothialera is the oh. <laughs> Svarda colony. Uh, Yolia. This is, I have to check. It's not on this document. <laughs> we can worry about that later. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I was just making sure which is, which is the Svarden one that we're concerned about. Okay, mm. got it. So the area that Gringina described uh, is, uh, you know, somewhere yeah, right here, which you guys only... already know about. Dream Tree. Yeah. Machine well, zone little, territory. Little further, yeah, machine yeah. zone. Even out. Yes. Yep. There you go. Toy um, score. Out of curiosity, what's the animal half? 
Ah, uh, the tiger, I think. Interesting. Hmm. Sort of race the theme. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're not connected. What theme? Seen some other metal animals. I've seen one. Uh, ah, yeah, the lion, lion. right? Mm-hmm. I remember it. There was a crab. There was a tresum. There was a. Okay, tell what? you what, I Ravens. don't want to know anything Ravens. else. You guys are up to some really strange stuff, and I feel like the less I know about it, the better it's going to be for me. Well, anyways, uh, if you hear anything more about that, you can write to us, and uh, we'll likely be seeing you in Urca once we finish up our business here. Okay. Your help has meant so much. Thank you. Oh, that's... well, that's, you know... No problem. And, uh, at some point in the future, I will write you with a lot of questions about the wolf. Ooh, okay. Ah, uh, well, you can ask. I don't know what I can answer. Um, well, look, I'll be I. I'll writing to you. <sighs> okay, but no promises. I'll just, you know, I just do what I'm told. Hmm. I mean, gnomes are taught to do to do that. Uh, Mikiza works a little differently, but uh, that's what's kept us alive, you know. Can I have some of your hair? <laughs> what? No. Okay. Weirdo. Uh, he collects. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, never mind. I'm just, I'm just gonna get going. Yeah, uh, if you ever need something, feel free to reach out as well. All right. Oh, well, hopefully I won't. But thanks. All right, I'll, I'll be off. I don't actually remember where the exit is. Uh, this way. Uh, you gotta go down the stairs first. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Got it. <laughs> Starts heading off. All right. Uh, well, we're a bit behind schedule. Um, would you like? We should speak with our uh, our friend. Are we ready for that? Um. Yeah. All right, everyone, brace yourselves <clears throat> for the very sudden. <laughs> 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 You guys think you can keep him contained? I am not sure. All we could wait. Would we be able to speak with him where he is? Sadly, not. I asked, but that is not allowed. You would have to bring him. I could bring Cass with. So. He could help containing him. Ah, uh, that's the only thing I can offer. Time is it? Uh, I stole them. Wait, uh, what did you ask? What time is it? Okay, yeah, it's uh, it's still still in the morning. Do you want? Oh, do on. you want to go to the tavern and let me bring him, or or bring him there, or where do we want to meet? You think you can transport him by yourself? Well, I wouldn't be by myself. If he would... does that teleporting thing, can you can you get a handle on him? <laughs> I mean, I tried last time. Right? It didn't work. Uh, so what can we do here? Kind of just put like a claw into his mouth. Right? Yes. If my experience with magic is uh, anything to go off of, uh, most magics require uh, 
either words spoken, complex gestures with their hands, or an object of some sort. So if yeah, you but no one to... follows those rules. Eh, it was... <laughs> if it was they words. don't, you send me to them. I will write them. <laughs> <laughs> As it needs to be. There are proper ways to do things. Without rules, the world is chaos. You do remember yeah. that every time he has disappeared and reappeared somewhere, he did say something. So if you were to uh, uh, gag him and somehow uh, prevent his hands from doing any gestures by, you know, binding them, removing them, whatever, oh. it could work. What? Sounds good. So I see you're at the tavern. <laughs> what? Wait, if we can't do it at the tavern, then where are we going with him? And Brooke is not going to let us to uh, see their secret hideout, I think. So he has to go there alone and bring him to us. Bring him it's to not... us where? Are we taking him around the town? To the tavern, I think. Right? Yeah, that was a plan. We can keep him gagged there and make him answer yes, no questions. Right? I would make sure to bind his hands as well just to prevent oh, yeah. the, the teleportation magic is one thing but to, he did other spooky things so like push through uh, i mean you did give me the option of either binding his hands or cutting them off so I yeah whatever that. you have to do just disable his hands uh please don't cut his hands off please uh, for example you could put a weapon and shield into them and they are no longer functional for spell casting unless he has defeat <laughs> Uh, I know for a fact no one follows those rules. I do. I got the forecast of feet in the last campaign. <laughs> the feet. It, the, all the feet does is give you advantage on concentration checks. The other part doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, but, uh, I don't whatever. understand. Don't give him a weapon, though. That's dangerous. Just give him two shields. <laughs> <laughs> Just put him in armor. He does not. Pro he's not proficient in. Yeah, then he only has a speed of twenty feet. <laughs> but if the shield has a holy symbol on it, it's a loophole. <laughs> I'll simply <laughs> turn it upside down. <laughs> Whoa! I would never. All right, I will get him to you guys. Um... <laughs> Just follow all of these rules. It is critical. You could die. Okay. Um. By the way. Pontifex, you should probably take a look at my mind earlier. Uh, later. <laughs> if he still has the power, if he still has the power, because I'm not sure I can <coughs> exactly explain what I saw. Speaking of uh, power, um, did we did we long rest to level up and whatnot? Yes. Get the spell slots and everything. You asked this earlier today, no, Professor. I know that we level, but did we actually? Because I see people are still missing HP. I just lost 50 HP. If you looked at me. <laughs> okay, 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 we did. Good, good, good. Yeah, yes, I can read minds like uh, like you would not believe. Yeah, I <coughs> think that would be the best way to do it. <clears throat> sure. Okay. All right. The rest of you um, wait at the end, <coughs> and Brooke goes to pick up the Siskirin. That's the idea. Yeah. Oh dear. Uh, on the way back to the end, I hate lugging this thing around so ridiculously. I have that extra set of heavy armor that I'm not using anymore. <laughs> Can I like, like pawn this real quick somewhere? <laughs> Your like bloody dented armor? Uh, yeah, I uh, pawn it for a reason. Uh... Unless you want to carry 55 pounds of metal, I don't. Okay, chainmail, just... yeah? Yeah, it's it's just chainmail. Okay, let's just say that you... Um, yeah, there is a pawn shop here, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's just trying to offload it as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, you can get a good 15 gold pieces out of it. It's... <laughs> it was 75 once upon a time, but 15, I'll take it. Okay. Uh, great doing business with you, eh? Wash off all the blood, bye. <laughs> Uh, all right, Brooke. Um, you traverse the colony. Yeah, you enter the mm -hmm. the alchemies and alcohols store. 
uh, down the secret passage and into the tunnels and uh, soon enough uh, you locate uh, uh, Casimir who has been um, he looks bored out of his mind well you look happy ah, about time you showed up oh, okay are we going well, we have to gag him and bind his hand so he can't do any magic. He is apparent he is pretty adaptable to teleporting away and we don't want that to happen. And uh, pushing Okay, people. we're not going to see Sunny. Alright, yep, yeah, sure. Okay, let me just get to work. Uh guy from yesterday, yeah? Yep. Hmm. Fine, fine. This way. He grabs uh, uh he grabs an ale and uh, leads it down a different tunnel. Um, and soon enough, you reach a, uh, a an area with uh, three jail cells, uh, two empty and one, sh uh, sure enough, occupied by Saskarian. Um He is just sitting in a corner, staring up ahead through the bars. Uh, his glare is cold. He watches the you two approaching and says nothing. All right, says Karen. I'm assuming you know what is about to happen. Please try not to resist. <laughs> so we don't have to hurt you. Uh, you will be brought with the other folks. And, and we will get the questions out of you we tried to get out of you earlier. Sounds good? Sounds good. And I'll make my way to... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the two the two of you um, open the cell and go in, and uh, uh, Saskarin does put up a, a a bit of a fight, but nothing that the two of you can't handle easily. Uh, his magic doesn't seem to take uh, uh, to take hold uh, as he um, you hear him speak uh, and yell in infernal, but uh, uh, he's unable to escape. You can just uh, bind uh, his hands behind his back and gag him, and he's just. Uh, uh, Casimir just throws him over his shoulder and he puts uh, one arm uh, uh, on his hip and says, Okay, where to? To the dragon wagon. Oh, of no. course. Where else would we? You know, there's better places in town for uh, that give you a better ale. I mean, yeah, but none of them have Kaldu, right? Well, yeah, good point, good point. Uh, the two of you make your way out of the tunnels, and uh, uh, sure enough, nobody bothers you on the way. Uh, in fact, it seems like some people recognize you specifically, Brooke. Um, word of uh, what the uh, party did has uh, already begun to, to spread. Um, and they just... You're just free to get to to the tavern. Um, Kelly see what you're up to and just lets you go. Gives a bit of a shrug <laughs> and a you know like I'm not dealing with this kind of kind of uh, stare. <laughs> um, and you're you join with uh, with the rest of the party. Uh, as, right. as Casimir Oof. steps into the room, uh, he just uh, th uh, pretty much just throws a. Uh, uh, just carrying on a bag like a bag of potatoes, just boom. Yeah, we're definitely not untying or ungagging him because he was not happy in his cell. Well, who would be? <laughs> uh, you guys want me to start breaking some fingers, or is this not that kind of interrogation? Uh, <gasps> there was a, there was a op yeah there was an option of cutting his hands, but I don't think we're there. Yet. Well, it's better if you do, you know, necessary. finger by finger. That would be an option. But not now. Maybe later. Right? Okay. And I'll uh, make sure that Saskarin hears that. <laughs> Saskarin is still. listening. Okay, who wants to start? Pip uh, sits down on the edge of the bed and... Uh, sits where Saskarin can see him and he pulls out his 
his white cloth doll and then he starts plucking out various uh, objects from his bag. Um, he pulls out uh, four nails and uh, one of the clumps of hair that he gathered and starts just piercing the nails into each hand and foot until there's one on each and then start sewing very slowly the hair into the head of the doll. Just maintaining eye contact with Saskaran the whole time. Mm -hmm. Casimir's head is like popping up from behind uh, one of uh, Pip's shoulders, just looking at what the hell he's doing. Um, while that's happening, Talix would just like <laughs> to look over Saskaran and... How has he been treated? Uh, are there like wounds that are clearly new or does he look like sickly or malnourished or anything? I'll take a medicine check. Yeah. <clears throat> Alex doesn't spot any additional wounds nothing that uh, he hadn't uh, uh taken part into causing uh, uh the day before um he doesn't look like he's any more malnourished than he was before either all right but he's still wounded from our encounter right or has he healed i guess um I forgot that people heal everything that they can <laughs> um. um, Based, um, it definitely looks like his wounds have been tended to. They're not closed, right. but you see some bandages on him that you guys did not place. Well, fair is fair. Um, Talix is going to cast Cure Wounds at second level. On Saskara? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Max healing, here we go. Not. 13. It's uh, maybe not as impressive as your magic, but. No need for you to suffer. There isn't uh, any trace of gratitude behind his eyes. Uh, in fact, he was leaning back slightly as if trying to escape uh, Talix's touch, but there, there isn't much he can do to um, avoid anything. And as uh, a good portion of his wounds close up and uh, leave behind nothing but a, a, a nasty scar, um, he just glares, silent. Struggling a little bit with his bindings. Rook would probably sit down next to Casimir while the others do their stuff. I reach for the zip. Pip closed the doll uh, in various scraps of fabric that he's gathered along the trip and uh, just fashions it to as closely as possible resemble Saskaran until uh, at some point it begins to sort of magi magically reconfigure itself. The cloth sort of stitches itself into the doll and it looks almost exactly like Saskaran. And then Pip rips out one of the locks of his own hair and sort of stuffs it in one of the one of the bindings of Saskaran so that it's touching his hand. And then Saska uh, and then Saskaran hears in his mind. Hello, Saskaran. I'm going to pry deep within. And if you're good, it won't hurt as much as it could. 
And then he unravels a set of needles. And one by one starts pricking them into the doll. Saskaren may feel a little itchy as Pip uses the effigy feature pinpoint. <clears throat> um, so with five tokens, I'll learn all of this information. Okay. The target's resistances, vulnerabilities, immunities, and his greatest phobia. Okay. In terms of resistances, while he has no resistances in terms of uh, uh, types of damage, uh, he uh, he's just naturally um, stronger against the magical effects at avoiding uh, their effects. No vulnerabilities that you're able to discover. No immunities that you are able to discover. Saskarian's greatest fear is of being alone. It's a little different from uh, what you sensed uh, uh, way back when from uh, uh, the priest Egon. We had a similar kind of fear, but his was focused uh, around the, the love for his family and his fear of letting them down, uh, of not being able to, to care for them, <clears throat> of being uh, seen by them as not being good enough. Um, but Saskarian's fear of loneliness is a more personal one. Uh, he has never had anyone. Well, with one exception. And he hates that loneliness that has permeated his entire life. Okay. And then Pip leans down very close to Saskarin and says in his mind, We have some questions for you. Can Saskarin answer? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. Um, and then Pip says uh, in Saskarin's mind, If you answer dishonestly or try to teleport away, I will stab this needle in the eye of this doll and it will not be pleasant for you. Do you understand? Roll an intimidation check. I'm going to use PowerPoint inspiration. <laughs> 26. Dang. <laughs> Jeez. I so. Uh, there is a moment uh, of defiance uh, in Saskarin's eyes. He doesn't seem to really um, worry about a child, about this doll. Uh, he doesn't seem to have an idea of like what you can actually do with it. But as you, as Pippa notices that uh, um, words are not enough, he brings the needle a little bit closer to the eye of the doll and Saskarin begins to twitch and pull back uh, and close his eyes like there is uh, uh, something uh, almost hurting him. Uh, he can, he can, he feels the threat materialize uh, physically, and uh, um, with with that, uh, as he as Pip pulls the needle away from the eye, uh, Saskarin calms down, uh, breathing heavily through the the gag, and just nods. At this point, uh, Squeak, uh, as a rat, climbs up Saskarin, uh, his arm and sits on his shoulder, and then Pip uh, says through Squeak, He'll talk.
Did you say that to us? Mm hmm Do you want to take off the gag? Or what do you what are you saying with it? He won't go anywhere if he knows what's good for him. He's not the leaving I'm concerned about. <clears throat> I've seen him use very powerful magic. I I'm afraid of what he could do with just his words. Uh, I can't, or I likely can't pry, but I could read his surface thoughts for a minute if it is necessary. But... If you believe it is what we should do, then you know, I've never seen you do this. If you can get answers from his mind, then go ahead. I mean, if you want to, worst case, me and Cass could stand next to him, and as soon as we hear his language, we can act, right? Knock him out. I suppose so. I suppose we do have him surrounded, outnumbered. Maybe I am being the paranoid one. If he starts to speak a spell, I'll stab the needle straight into this doll's tongue. I will assume that does something, so... Sure. <clears throat> Alright, Kaz, get ready. And I'll stand next to him. Next to Saskaren. Uh, the professor is also going to hold um, the Mind Sliver cantrip for if I uh, see him cast a spell. Okay. And I'm just gonna keep holding the cantrip. Mm. <clears throat> Brooke and Casimir kind of are... For... Oh? Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of looking for an item that is ne not necessarily my sword, just so that I can hit him with like some big piece I have uh, some sequined robes that make you dance really well. <laughs> Uh, no? Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, is there like a vase or something? <laughs> Casimir picks up uh, a table. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. You're taking what? Is there like a vase? <laughs> sure, yeah, there is a uh, flower pot. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. Actually, no, I got new dagger. I'll use those. Thanks, Pip. No, no, use mine. <laughs> Pip lays, lays a couple of his out on the bed. Okay. And he takes one. And holds it close. With the throat of Saskaren. Okay. Do we really have to be so, you know, violent about this? I mean, I have been pulled over once <laughs> today. I'm not going to let that happen a second time. Okay, who wants to ask the questions? Professor, were you gonna do your brain thing? Uh, uh, no, well, I, as I said, I, I trust in your methodology. If you think that my method is better, then uh, sure, but if it is unnecessary, then I will trust Pip. Fine. Then the gag is removed, and you may ask your questions. So, how are you today? <laughs> um, so Karen glances at paper and it says, I feel like shit. So, uh, is your name Saskaren? Another glance at Pip. 
He just nods. Seem different from uh, from when we first met. He remains quiet. Well. So, Orm, your friend. Uh, tell us a bit more about him. Mm -hmm. Orm. He's not so bad. He glances at Pip. Doesn't elaborate any further. What sort of a uh, being is he? <laughs> Your people. You come in different forms, different sizes, but never before I see one like him. Nobody made of metal. Why does he want this book? Orm says that Jamuel was is bad to him. He says he sets things right. Why do you need the book for that? I do what Orm tells me. Orm says he needs the book. I bring the book. Did Orm tell you to kill Jamuel and his dog? <laughs> The dog is my decision to kill. I think it's funny. <sighs> and uh and this town killing them was that funny to you? Not at first, but then I always find humor where I can. The only reason you did it? So Skirin straightens his position a little bit. He's trying to, uh, however he can, make himself a bit more comfortable on this bed. He's trying to um, just sit up and lean with his back against the wall. It is not original plan. I just think I get to you. But... Things don't go according to plan. They never do. I can't do this anymore. Someone else talk to him. <clears throat> Is there any way you will ever not look for the book and leave all of this behind and not follow us anymore? I have one friend. 
and I have many flaws. But giving up on my friends is not one of them. I promise I bring him the book. Why does Orm mean so much to you? He <clears throat> is alone. That is why we are friends. I am alone too. Where was Orm when you were trapped down in that temple? Why didn't he come for you then? Mm. Looks for him. For me. He looks for me. Are these metal animals from Orm? Mm. I think so. They don't listen to me, but they don't hurt me. I think they help. Hmm. I don't have to hurt you. You can just give me book. You what have already I... killed 12 people. Hmm. Accident? Doesn't sound like it was. It is your fault. If you give me book, they do not die. Maybe we should have killed you. Same reasoning? <sighs> Would have saved everyone a lot of trouble? But you do not kill me. You Personate. know why? Because why? you... Because they won't let me. You are friends with him. And he turns his head to look at Tekka. What does that mean? I am like him. Huh. You're nothing like Tekka. Two worlds. Neither one loves us. We know each other's pain. There might truth in your words. If we are the same, why did you run? Why did you fear me? I make plans. I try to follow plans, but sometimes I change my mind. I change my mind a lot. It makes things difficult. But now, I speak to you. 
and I listen to you and I make proposal we are friends now <laughs> and you do not hurt friend and you do not steal from friend friends help each other you take book to warm Why don't you tell us where we might meet him? I can show you. <laughs> Here. I'll take out the map. No, no, I show you. We go. I don't think that's going to happen. You said yourself you change your mind a lot. How are we supposed to trust you? I'm sure you called... Jamil, your friend, too, when you needed to. I don't change my mind about Orm. I bring him book. We'll consider it. Talix will grab the gag and gag him again. Okay. <clears throat> take him back before anything else happens. You want us to take him back? Not to let him here? Your friends will keep holding them, right? <laughs> I'll look at Cass. Is there anyone besides you and me here at the moment? Yeah, but not in the jail cell. That's empty. But someone would need to supervise them there, right? Yeah, I can get someone. Hmm. Well, is that is okay with you all? It is necessary. I'm assuming we all meet here back after? Are we really done with him? I didn't think so. What else do you need to know? <sighs> Say it, Pip. Just don't. don't want him out of our sight. Well, we can discuss in front of him. I, for one, am quite eager to get him out of my sight. You took all your time making precautions. And you don't think he can leave a cell. I agree with Pip. If there is no trust keep him close well then we have to decide right now right here what we're doing with him uh, uh, we are you guys doubting the strength of our cells we <sighs> hold monsters in there all the time what's the point we're gonna have to deal with this sooner or later why don't we just why don't we just take this to Orm And then what? Maybe... I don't know. Try to kill us and take it like he has this whole time? That's all Ten Hearts been doing. Same with him. But does he know that this isn't what he... actually wants? We don't know what he actually wants or why he wants it. 
Machines will keep coming if we do nothing. Mm. Uh, we should probably ask him how he keeps finding us. And maybe he knows how the machines find us as well. Right? That would be a start. I need to go make sure we're gonna have some horses. And make some uh, arrangements. You all can uh, do what you want to do. Okay. Stay safe. Wants to leave. Okay. The rest of you? We're discussing this in front of him, right? On what mm -hmm. one? I... I think there are honestly two options. Either we can convince him to drop everything he has been doing for now and leave us alone and not go back to Orm and try this over again or seeing what he has done or what he is capable of doing just to get this book We might have to get rid of him, right? If Orm really considers Saskarin to be a friend, maybe we have something here. Maybe we can use Saskarin. But it might backfire. Because I don't think Orm really gives that much of a crap about you, Saskarin. Leaving you in a hole, letting you starve, while you do his bidding, all of his dirty work, while he sits doing whatever he's doing. You're alone, Saskarin. You're all alone. Well, we Saskarin is again. visibly fighting against his bindings at this point, and you hear him just growling <clears throat> behind his gag. You're nothing like Tekka. Tekka has a heart. Pip, be mindful of your words. There may be similarities, but you see none. I once believed in false promises. Karen is looking away from the two of you. Do we will not come to a decision now. So we're bringing him back to the Celts. For now, but a decision must be made. I agree. Casimir picks him up, <clears throat> places him on his shoulder. So, are we still going to the place, Brooke, or...? When were our other appointments? I know the Telex just left, but... So, no? Before, I mean, I would like to, but uh, I don't know if the others would come. We'll go where I am needed. Otherwise, you can wait here for Telex as well. 
I'll be back afterwards. I just... Awesome. just... Alright, you, you guys look like you got stuff to talk about, so I'm just, uh... Just going to take care of this guy, and, uh... Well, if I don't see you in, uh... In an hour, Brooke, I'm... I'll be off. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, just... Figure it out. Mm hmm The little halfling is going to just, uh... Um, effortlessly take uh, uh, Siskarin out of the building. Pip's hand still has the needle wavering up against the doll, just fist shaking. Before he throws the doll to the ground. This is not an easy decision, huh? I... If I can be honest with you guys, I currently don't see a way where he won't cause problems for us down the road. And we already have a lycanthrope after us, potentially. We have metal beings after us. And the pace we're going, there's probably going to be a lot more of very soon. He does not seem repentant or open to the ideas of change, so it does not seem like we can convince him. I mean, should wait for Talix to come back to make the decision. And no offense to you, Pip, but you're still a kid. So as much as I want the whole group to be part of that decision, the decision about someone's life, that's a burden that shouldn't be upon you. Everyone okay with that? Did we put it to a vote? Well, it seems to me this is a vote for one side says to kill him and be done with it. Uh, but I'm not understanding the other side. What is the alternative? I guess the alternative was there to... Let him go free? <laughs> to use no. him to get to Orm. Would be my guess. To we walk with Saskarin. We meet with Orm. Otherwise, the machines will keep coming. No problem is resolved. So we bring him with us like a ticking bomb? T do, not do ticking bombs exist? With do they tick? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the logistics, but you know what I mean. Not taking him with us is just as bad. If we keep avoiding this problem, it's only going to get worse. Squeaks died twice because of this guy. And Orm. Yes, I believe a vote is prudent. I was just wanting to understand the options. All right. So what's our <laughs> schedule after this looking like, after this vote? When do we have to meet with Telex people? Sometime during the day. I know no details. I if told your matter is important, you should go. Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's probably not important, but it is important to me. 
then you should go. We will not be here for long. Okay. After this. Anyone wants to come with? Ready to get clear their hats? You're welcome to. I'll take my dagger back, Brook. Of course. He hands it over. You mind if I go take a walk? Just stay safe. I will. We, we said we wouldn't split up, so we have done it quite a few times in this town. Definitely my fault, since I've done it the most, but just because we bested Orm once doesn't mean, or twice, maybe even three times, doesn't mean it will always go that well. Just around the block. Okay. Uh, I look around the room. There are the flowers from Telex somewhere. Uh, in the flower pot that you are holding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, it's been a long day. I'll take on some <laughs> weaponized them. I forgot. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> right. Alex, you you have secured the the horses. Um, <clears throat> it's by the the uh, it's by the governor's will. Um, yeah, you are able to. There are some seeds available for you. They are lended to you for the day. Oh, I, I don't hear you. Honey, nice how many. Ah, uh, however many you need. Five it is. Okay. And uh, as the horses are being prepared, if you if you want, you can like go back to the group. Let them know. Sure. You don't really have like a meeting point after this, so you know, like, but just briefly after Pip has left, you'll be back. I have left too. Brooke left too? Mm hmm. To go to his. Okay. Well, I, mean, I thought maybe you'd want to ask if Talix wanted to come with. Oh, sure. Uh... Yeah, go I, ahead. He's meeting with together. a friend of his, right? Yeah. No, it just sounds like case. just a new thing. All right. If no one else is going, I will accompany you. I have questions. This friend you are meeting is a phantom, yes? Yes. Sure. If it is okay, I would like to uh, accompany you. Okay. Uh, yeah. It is just you and I, yes? Yeah. And Casimir. Right. All right. Uh, quick question. Yeah. Just, just to like, see, um, you brought up the possibility of Pontifex reading your mind, uh, uh to see what you had seen early with Baryon. Is it yeah. something you want to get done now, or not? Nah? Yeah, good question. That may be part of why he's wanting to go with him. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> just wanted to make sure that he wasn't, like, forgotten. Cool, yeah. cool. I just didn't know if now would be the right time for that. Seeing the circumstances, but sure. Follow me, Pontifex. He will hobble along after you. <laughs> okay, so what does this mean? Brooke and Pontifex are gonna be gone, and... Pip is off alone. Right. I believe everyone is alone, <laughs> actually. Is if Talix isn't back yet. Well, there's Talix and Tekka right now together at the inn. Um, oh, okay. How is he waiting for you guys before he heads off? Like, well, what's what's happening? The way I understood it is that like uh, Brooke and Potfix will do their thing, and then we'll the rest of us will meet at Tarva if yeah everyone wants to. I don't know. Yeah. 
how Pip so, feels about it now. So broken pontifex right. are not coming. And neither is Pip. C coming where? To the Atara. Oh, uh, Pip plans on it. He's just taking a breather. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I thought we would all go. So that's why I asked for the timings on when the meeting is. Oh, you do want to go to the Atarava? Yeah, yeah it sounded like we had some time before, <clears> so... <throat> okay, all right, because I was understanding that you weren't beforehand. going. No, no, no. That's it's, why I'm asking. I asked, yeah, I wanted... We want to go, all of us, I think. Okay. okay. Uh, tell us can take the time just to prepare some things for the journey. Uh, get supplies and stuff. We can talk about that later. Okay. Uh, in that case, Pontifex, Brook takes you um, toward the eastern side of the colony. Uh, and then he leaves you alone for a moment as he goes to, to get Casimir. Uh, until he comes back with a halfling. And, uh, um, well, Brook, the... Uh, do you Eight. want to take it from here? Sure. Um, Brooke and Cass will lead Pontifex towards a few streets until they reach a little bit. I'm assuming it's a little bit outside of the colony, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Not it's on the eastern sense. side. Um, until they walk towards a graveyard, actually. And before they enter, Brooke looks at Casimir, takes a deep breath, and looks at Pontifex, and then goes into the graveyard. Mm -hmm. For a right. colony it is new, um, the graveyard is not that big. There aren't that many headstones. Um, there's a it's it's not uh um the feeling here is not uh, a a dark and scary one it's actually there's a lot of colorful flowers uh, um the place feels almost pleasant like a little garden yeah once what is this place um it's 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 a place where people bury their dead Yes, I, I'm aware of that, but why are we here? To meet my friend. <laughs> right? I... This might come over weird, but... I can't tell you other than showing you, right? Oh, I understand. So... There are plenty of things in a magical world that is similar. Pretty sure you have been in your time in a graveyard before, or at a graveyard. So you probably is expect, or can expect what to see, right? Uh, of course. Casimir raises an eyebrow. He's looking at Pontifex, but he doesn't say anything. Maybe a wizard now, but uh, I'm still a cleric of the goat. <laughs> I know my he's way a... around the dead. Yeah, he is a good egg. Don't worry, Casimir. I'm not worried. Okay, and Brooke will lead Pontifex to a rather big, uh, what is it called? Tombstone? Mm hmm. Which for you would, would read the following. Let me get that up. It reads for you, Sandra, Elizabeth, Jen, and damn it, it's covering the numbers. <laughs> uh -oh. And it says, born in second month, second day, 1065. 
to I'm assuming fourth month. Yeah. Fourth month. Twenty second day. Eleven fifty two. And he is in front of the stone and there is like some empty bottle with wilted flowers in front of it. And he looks at Cass one more time and then sits down in front of it. Do you want to start Cass or should I? I'm not sure how recent it's been since you've been here. Just over a week ago. It's your thing oh. now, Brooke. All right. He puts the flowers into that bottle and closes his eyes for a second, takes another deep breath, opens them. Looks at the tombstone. <clears throat> hey, Sonny. It's been a while. We brought you flowers again. Casimir's here too, and another friend. Hey. Uh, hello. Uh, a lot has happened since I last was here. And Brooke gives like a short version of basically things that had happened since the last time he has been here. And he is definitely leaving out stuff that isn't for the public ear. Because mm -hmm. there are potentially other people around that could listen. Mm -hmm. And once he brought her up to date, he continues. Also, I, I, I know this will sound weird, but... I I think I saw you in a dream the other day. Um, not sure if you remember, but it was memory of our tradition at the end of each mission. And you appeared as a panzer. I, if I can be honest, I'm not sure I 100% understood it. He takes, he closes his eyes and just stays quiet for a little while. Just to open them again and say, All right, I, I, I think that's it for now. Thanks for spending time with us. See you soon. Oh, uh, one more thing. It's weird, um, but I also fought again, like, in a proper group setting. It's like with the group that I'm with that I just told you about. It happened a few days ago, and weirdly enough, it kind of felt a bit like the old days. You know? He smiles for a second, then bows his head one more time. And then stands up. I'm at least done here. Thanks for coming with me. Do you have anything to say, Cass? Feel free to. Yeah, well... Got a little thing. Oh. Any... Steps in front of the headstone and lowers his head and says, I really hate not being able to talk. It's getting worse every day. He shakes his head, turns towards you. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Thanks for accompanying us, Pontifex. I... Uh, sure. I'm not I... sure if it is appropriate to give a, uh, a Jade Council prayer, so I won't. I mean, I know you will. I know you mean well. So, 
feel free to say whatever you want to say. Uh, was this a person the, that you used to fight with, a phantom like you? He... Yeah, you saw her the other day, in the dream, right? She was the one that was wearing my bandana. Yes. Yeah. Uh, forgive me if this is insensitive, I am uh, poor at this type of thing, but uh, how did she die? He Casimir waits a second. He looks back down. Uh, that's why I wanted to bring you here. I I can't really tell you. Yeah, we, uh, we can't tell you. I, uh, but you can show me. <laughs> ah, you're getting it. Listen, I'm not hopeful for this to work, but you're free to watch. Okay. And do your thing. Hey, this is you wanting me to use my magic, yes? Yeah. You got okay? okay? Yes, of course. Uh, it's just on you, yes, not your friend here. I mean... I can't speak for him, so he will have to give you his own answer, but definitely for me. Uh, okay. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to detect thoughts on Brooke. Okay. Brooke, what are you thinking about? Um, basically about what is just happening right now, being on the graveyard, mm -hmm. talking to Sunny. Thinking about old times, better times, when they were still together. The surface thoughts of Brook uh, are of... Uh, uh, they, they come through clearly to you, Pontifex. They are thoughts about the current situation and a few glimpses of uh, what its life back on, uh, on Plurna used to be like. Um, those glimpses resemble a bit the dream that uh, uh, you have... The dream of, of Brooke that you have had a, a glimpse of. Do you probe deeper? Right, well, here we go. And yeah, <laughs> he'll dive down the Brooke rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Brooke, are your thoughts about... Uh, yeah. How Sunny came to lose her life? Yes. Alright. Pontifex, there is no resistance from Brooke, as uh, your thoughts dive deeper into Brooke's mind. And then there is a resistance. It doesn't come from Brooke. Um, before your mind's eye uh, stands a black presence, a force of... Uh, of uh, uh, magic nature that is impenetrable no matter how hard you try the this memory of Brooke is out of your reach hmm. it is uh, frustrating for this to happen twice in the same day <laughs> Something needs to be refined. Uh, it seems you cannot show me. I... That's what I thought. I, I mean... If I could, I would. Right? Well, maybe one of these days when I am uh, better at what I do, I will be able to find more. I'd like that. You've got my okay for that. I will see what I can do if it is important to you. It is. So, thanks for I coming. assume it is the same with uh, Cass here. If I were to repeat the process, it would be obscured all the same. Brooke well... Nuts. 
That is my assumption. I can't probe two different things in the same spell, can I? I don't think you can. Yeah, I think whenever you do the probe that it ends. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah, he's not going to bother. <laughs> How do I put this in a way that uh, um, I can say? Um, when one becomes a phantom, they agree to a set of rules. And those rules are enforced. Does that make any sense? Uh, yes. You sign a contract of, of sorts. Of sorts. Mm -hmm. Of sorts. <laughs> right. It is our greatest strength. I'm sure it is. Uh, All okay. right. We should probably head back, right? But he Got a be, big uh, decision to make. Should be leaving soon after the vote. Once again, thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. And Brooke smiles at Pontifex, but it is pretty clear that there is at least some resemblance, or well, there is sadness behind the smile. Hey, Dennis? Um, yeah. Can I show them? Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. You can. Alright. More yes. art? Mm -hmm. Waiting for permission. I love that you're playing uh, Brooke's theme song this whole time, too. I love it. Oh, I so love good. this music. That was so sweet. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, okay. The anticipation is killing me. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> that's so good. Does it say that boat? Is... Yeah. Oh, that's the artist. <laughs> I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. I was like, why did you have boat into her? Fucking vandals. <laughs> 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 no respect for the name. Oh, that's so, good. Yeah. 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 Do you have like 20 more images that you're sitting on? <laughs> the uh, I don't know. I just got really inspired. That's very nice. Wow. Good shit, boat. Yep. Thanks, Good boat. Shit, boat. Good job, boat. That's very nice. Thank you, boat. That's, That's a lot of detail on the hair. Yeah, look at that. That's yeah, pretty. it looks really good. <laughs> I like it. All right. Wow. I think we can end the session on this note and finally get the Tarava first thing next session. After a vote. <laughs> ah, after, after a vote. A vo after a vote. Oh, man. All right. I'm just going to sit here and listen to the Brook song for a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for being here today. I hope you had fun. I hope this was exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was Everyone. very stressful. Moment there, Brooke. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks this for doing great. it with me. Next Sunday is the 20th. I hope to see you all there. Oh, boy. And uh, happy Valentine's Day in advance. Yeah. Yay, tomorrow. 